I'm standing next to a Mercedes four-speed automatic transmission. This is the 722.3X uh, series, which showed up in most passenger cars from the early 1980s right on up through the mid-1990s. Now, these, these transmissions here are getting old. They, they'll work and they'll go for a long time if maintained properly, but one of the problems I'm seeing is in relation to fluid leaks. I mean, when these O-rings get hard and brittle because of age and heat and the seals wear out, then you can start having numerous leaks around these transmissions and they'll drive you crazy because what happens is you think the leak is coming from somewhere and you replace one part and the next thing you know you look on the floor and it's still dripping because the leak's probably coming from somewhere else. Now I just went around this transmission and I counted approximately 14 places that this transmission can leak fluid. And let's walk around together and I'll show you these in more detail. I want to start on the left side. We'll move forward here to the front. Right here is where the pipe that goes up to the radiator oil cooler is attached with a banjo fitting and two aluminum washers. If those washers right in there get crushed or the bolt is not properly torqued, you will get small leaks right here at this fitting. Then moving down here, you're looking at the seal for the pan. That is a very common leak area because the pans get deformed or they're not torqued properly. Then moving up here, you're looking at the vacuum modulator. In behind the vacuum modulator is an O-ring. So if you see weeping coming out of the back or the bottom of the modulator right here, then expect that O-ring has hardened up and is allowing transmission fluid to pass by. The next area is in this shaft right here, the shift shaft that goes straight into the valve body. There's an O-ring down in the housing that will start leaking. This is a very tough one to re repair because it requires taking the pan off and taking a lot of the transmission parts out from inside to repair that. Then moving back here, you have this piston cover with a large O-ring. These are much less likely to leak, but it is, it is, uh, it can happen, and there's a big O-ring in there that would need to be replaced. Then moving back here to the back, you have the rear shaft seal. From my experience, this shaft seal does not leak as much as the front seal, but it is something you need to watch. If you see wetness around the back, uh, uh, here by the flex disc, expect the leak to be coming from this rear output shaft seal. Now we'll move around to the right side, and you have the kick down switch right here at the back. And that kick down switch is bolted into the pan housing here, and there's also a couple of O-rings that seal this unit here from leaking. So if you see any wetness here or here, suspect hardened O-rings, once again, that are allowing transmission to leak through. Then here you have another piston that can leak. Once again, not, not all that common. And then you have these two pistons here, which can leak out the O-rings. Now what happens is you may think that it's coming from the pan and what's really happening is the leak is coming down from up above dripping off the pan and you may change this pan gasket here only to see the leak come back. And this is what's happening on my 300 SDL. I'm getting a little bit of leak right out of the Bowden cable right here. And there's an O-ring in there. You can see it. Here's a new part right here and you can see the O-ring. And what is required to fix this leak is the pan has to be removed and you have to go in and disconnect the end of the Bowden cable here to replace this cable and to fix this leak. Now moving forward, we have the other banjo fitting for the other transmission cooler line right here. And then finally, on this side is a very common leak area and that's on the transmission fill tube. The reason is this gets flexed around in vibration. And right down in here is another O-ring, similar to that O-ring right there. The tube must be removed, the O-ring replaced. Look at here, somebody's used a whole bunch of silicone trying to get this sealed, and it's still leaking. Now let's move up to the front, where I see one of the most common leak areas, and that's coming out of the front seal and the torque converter shaft. So I'm going to pull the torque converter out. 
And here you can see the seal right here. This seal will leak, very common, and you'll see wetness coming out of these holes here and it'll look like it may be leaking out of the rear of the engine, but it's really leaking out of the transmission. So inspect the color of the fluid carefully to determine whether it's engine oil or transmission fluid. Then right here, this is the, the pump housing for the transmission. There's a big O-ring right here. If you see wetness right around this area here, it means the O-ring has hardened and is leaking. And you're going to have to remove this whole section here and pull this out and take it apart to replace that seal. I know what you're thinking. You say, well, Kent, I've got a transmission. I've got one of these in my old uh, Mercedes, and it's, it's all wet all around. How do I find out where the leak is coming from? I mentioned earlier in the video it's very easy to be fooled because the, the leak could be coming up from some place a little higher, and you think it's just the pan gasket, replace the gasket, and it doesn't fix the problem. Here's the trick. You have to thoroughly clean the transmission. That's either taking it into a car wash and spraying it or taking it to a place that can pressure wash it. You have to get it spotlessly clean, like this transmission right here. And then you only drive it a short distance, come back, jack the car up, get on it with a good light, and try to see where the leak is just beginning. If you wait too long or drive it too, too far, you're going to see wetness all over, and you will not be able to find the leak. So that's the first thing, diagnosis, and then you can go after the repair.